I hope it's that cat. Really? Oh, because well, we have raccoons. Oh, yeah. I mean, we got crazy. We, oh, I'm not kidding you. We have crazy raccoons. I mean, like, we have a herd of raccoons that come out of this woods at night, and they just kind of roam around. It's like a gang. Oh, they are. They're like a gang. I'm not kidding you. Do you see these little green things we have all around in the yard, around the house, and around the cabin? They're a green plastic thing. You see how the lids are all flipped open, and the insides of those are all... Those are uh, insect, the insect people put those out to yeah. test for termites, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, we've had them now for like six months. Well, whatever stuff they, the insect people put in those, the raccoon says it's like candy. Oh, no. No, it doesn't kill them. Yeah. Yeah, but do you see how the lids on all those are pulled oh, yeah. open and the stuff? Those are the raccoons. Those are raccoons. I saw one. You cannot, I could not get that lid off myself, okay? This raccoon's got his haunched over that sucker. Pow! Pulls that sucker open. So I don't know if he hears something, it could very. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story about the gang of raccoons that uh, hang around the cabin. <laughs> You know what I love about watercolor? It's just this constant dance between you and the, the paint. Uh, watercolor, when it's done the way it should be, it, 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 it's right on the edge of being out of control. And you are constantly, as the artist, trying to let that happen and then respond to it. If you try to push it and make it do uh, what it doesn't want to do, a lot of times you lose that, the, the poetry uh, of, of what a watercolor can be. So when you get in that place where it's just happening and you're doing this dance with the paint and the water and the paper oh my goodness that is just it's such a beautiful experience So I'm just playing around uh, using a lot of different techniques in the beginning of this painting. A lot of wet and wet uh, watercolor. You know, in watercolor you can work wet on wet, uh, wet on uh, which, you know, the paper, when it's wet on wet, you can, it shimmers and shines and you've got water sitting on top of the surface. Wet on a damp sheet uh, works totally different. You know, the paper's still damp, but it's a dull surface. There's still water embedded in the paper, but not, it's not laying on the surface like it does on a wet uh, sheet. And then you can work wet on dry uh, paper where uh, you're, you're doing all those dry brush techniques. Those are a lot of the things I save for the, the last stages of a painting. But this is a lot of wet and, and wet work right here in the beginning. It's the same thing with your brush work. You, a brush can be really wet <laughs> and a brush can be really uh, damp or a brush can hardly have any water in it at all. And all three of those variables will give you different results when you put the brush down on the paper. I'm uh, right now in this demo, I'm using a very small brush and I'm drawing 
in the image of, of what I want with the brush. I, I didn't do any drawing ahead of time with this. I'm doing all the drawing with the brush. And, and so I go to a little smaller brush and I've got a little bit more control and it's, uh, I'm just defining some of the areas that later on I'll go back in and put washes into and clean up and maybe put a little bit more detail into it. One of the most important things that I try to keep paramount in my mind as I'm painting is the relationship between the values and the painting. And I, I believe deeply in this idea of contrast of extension, which is basically just a relationship of the proportions in the painting. So the proportions of value between your light values, your middle values, and your dark values should all be different. You shouldn't have the same amount of light as you do middle, as you do dark. And what I'm working towards in this painting is a dominant amount of light values with a little bit of middle and a little bit of dark. And, and remember, values will group together according to their similarity. So your dark values will group together, your middle values will group together, and your light values will group together. And I want to remind you, these are sketches. They're, they're watercolor sketches. They're not what I would call finished paintings. But a lot of times these quick little studies like this, where you're learning the subject matter and you're experimenting with shapes and colors and a lot of that stuff you can bring over into your more finished paintings. And it's in these watercolor studies that you might just be more willing to experiment and try something because you're not so invested in the painting that you have this immense amount of time in and you don't want to mess it up, right? Uh, so I, to me, that's the beauty and the value of doing these quick little studies like this. And a lot of times what you take from this, you can use in more finished paintings and paintings that you do invest a little bit more time in. And you'll see some of those at the end of this video. I, I put up a couple of paintings that I use this painting actually for uh, a learning experience to do some of the things in those pieces. Just to explain a little bit here, what, what I do too, like when I'm working on a watercolor, usually I tape it down uh, with masking tape uh, onto uh, another board or surface. And when I'm working flat, now that, uh, I'm obviously working upright here uh, on a vertical just for the sake of the demonstration, but when I'm working flat, a lot of times uh, I can pick that, I can pick it up, especially when I'm doing those beginning wet into wet washes, and I can hold it and move it around, turn it upside down. I can have a little bit more control over some of the direction that the washes go when I do that. So it's a, it's a handy technique to use if you've never tried it before. I get to you.
I use a lot of spattering techniques to just create a repetition over the surface of the painting that ties different shapes together because of that similarity. Um, you know, repetition makes something understandable, right? So the spattering techniques adds a uh, that repetition that I felt like I needed. In this demo, I signed it just so people could see how I do that. Now I'm just pulling off the masking tape. It, it creates a nice border for the painting so you can kind of see what the painting looks like almost with a mat on it, uh, just cleaning up those edges. I hope you enjoyed this one. Quick little demonstration. Uh, here's some other examples of some of those paintings I was talking about. Well, here's some video that I took uh, and you can see how I've used some of the images here as reference for ideas that developed in this little watercolor sketch that I that I did. I love to fly fish and I, I do all catch and release fishing so um, it's a place that I can find inspiration for a lot of my paintings. Thanks for sticking with me in these, and, and I hope that uh, you'll, if you like what I'm doing, you'll subscribe uh, and tell other people about it and share it. Uh, and we'll see you the next time. Been chasing after my shadow.